Hello everyone, I am Elisa with EECC Travels and today I want to talk to you about the trip that we just took which was an 11 day Alaska adventure. So this was a cruise tour. There are two different ways you can visit Alaska via cruise line. You can do a cruise only or you can do a cruise tour. We're gonna get into the specifics of that in just a second. If you are new to our channel, please hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. If you like this video as you're watching it, please give it a big thumbs up. Okay, so let's get into this. What we did was a land tour first and the cruise portion after. So we had seven days of land, four days of sea. This trip was incredible, but there are some things that really surprised us about it and we wanna let you know about this. How did the trip start? Well, we flew to Anchorage because that was our starting point. Since we had never been to Anchorage before, we decided to add on a couple of days there. While we were there, we stayed in the downtown area. We went and saw uh, Ships Creek, which was a really cool area where you could go and fish right in the middle of a city. That's something that's pretty unique and something I think you're really only gonna see in Alaska. I thought that was pretty awesome. But then we also got to get out a little bit and see some of the wilderness around Anchorage and it's absolutely breathtaking. Going at the time of year we did, we were there the first week of June, there was still snow on the mountains. Alaska is just so beautiful. And the first thing I'm gonna say that really surprised us, and this is in a very positive way, is that there's so much more to Alaska than what you see on a round trip southeastern Alaska tour. So when you do these round trip cruises, you're only seeing the little bit of Alaska that's coming down on the side of Canada. You're not seeing the main part of Alaska. So getting into Anchorage, we could immediately see, you know, we were right there in the mountains all around us and it was beautiful and we were excited to start this adventure and see more of this beautiful state. So leaving Anchorage, we boarded the McKinley Explorer train, which took us on a just breathtaking train ride up into Denali. There is wildlife outside the train. There are rivers that you're gonna pass. There's streams. There's all different types of trees that you're gonna see the landscape change. Of course, you're gonna see mountains and you're climbing up to a higher elevation. So everything changes as you go along. The train itself was incredible. That experience alone was really, really cool and a highlight of this trip. So on the train, it's two different parts. The top dome is a viewing platform. You've got a glass dome all the way around you. It does have sunglasses on the top of it. So you can sit there with no sunglasses on, unlike I have right now, and see out into the beauty of the wilderness. The train ride lasts about eight hours, so it's relaxing, it's beautiful. You can get snacks and drinks delivered right to your chair. When you're hungry, you go downstairs, you can have breakfast and lunch in the dining car. So the second floor or the bottom deck of the train car is a dining car. It's great food and there's unique items. So we had reindeer chili and a bison sandwich. So these are things you're not gonna get in many, many places. And to have that as part of the train ride, I thought was really spectacular. There are also viewing platforms, so you can go outside the train and stand on these viewing platforms and just take in the coolness of Alaska, because it was a little chilly when we were there, but that's what we liked. And just really not even have that glass in between you and nature. The train ride was a definite highlight of this trip and something I want to do again. Next, once we made it into Denali, you're not in Denali National Park, you're right outside, but Holland America owns the resort. It is the McKinley Chalet Resort. It's beautiful. The resort itself has everything you need right there. There are restaurants, there's uh, meeting areas, there's, there's bars, there's shopping. There's just beautiful nature that you can walk around in your resort and the resort is big. So you can walk it or they have a shuttle that will take you everywhere you need to go. But staying there and just, we went outside 
and there is a river running right next to the resort. There are snow-capped mountains all around us. It's like nothing else. And like I said, again, this part of Alaska is so different than the southern part of Alaska. So if you've only done that round trip, lower southeastern part cruise, you're missing out on so much of the state. This is something that really stood out to us, surprised us, and made us really fall in love with the state even more. So as part of your tour, you get to do a, what they call a wilderness exploration. So they put you on a bus that goes into Denali National Park. You have a guide that works for Denali National Park and she's gonna take you around for about five to six hours and take you and find wildlife. So we saw so much. We saw a lot of caribou. We saw moose, we saw porcupines, we saw the state bird, the willow ptarmigan. Hope I'm saying that right. We saw Arctic squirrels. We saw bear tracks in the fresh snow, but no bears. <clears throat> really wanted to see a bear, but we missed out on that. But we knew they were there because the, the snow had just come on the ground and you could see the big bear tracks in it. So that was really cool. Great experience. I love seeing Denali. My only complaint is wish we had more time there. The tour that we did had two nights in Denali. I think if you could add, if you could do a tour that had a third night would make it even better because this is one of the largest national parks in the United States and to have a full extra day to explore it would just be like perfect. It would make this trip absolutely perfect. But while we were there, we decided the wilderness tour wasn't enough for us. We wanted to get up and see the mountain and we did a flight seeing tour. This is one of those like once in a lifetime bucket list things. It's expensive. It's a little scary, but it was 1000% worth it. I'm so glad we did it. We got to fly up to the mountain. We could not fly to the peak because the cloud cover had come down to about 9,000 feet. Of course, the mountain's over 20,000 feet, so we could only go, you know, about 9,000 feet up, but we still got to see the mountain. We saw all the beautiful glaciers around it. We saw the, uh, the changing colored mountains. It's just spectacular. So our time in Denali was something I'm never gonna forget and it's something that I want to experience again. So doing this, you might think, oh, this is like a once in a lifetime trip. You're only gonna do this once. If you can do it once, that's amazing because it's 1000% worth it. If you can do it again, do it because I think you're all, you know, the landscape's always changing. The weather's changing up there. You're gonna see different wildlife every time you go and even trying a different time of year because we were there the first week of June, maybe go a little later in the season and, and have different views. But Denali's spectacular. After Denali, we went to Fairbanks, Alaska, and here's where our education on the gold rush started. I knew nothing about the gold rush before this tour. I didn't care anything about the gold rush before this tour. But now I know a lot about it. I think it's interesting. And it was an experience I'm never gonna forget. So while we were in Fairbanks, we went to a gold dredge. So this was a little bit later. This is, the gold rush happened more in the Yukon, but once they discovered there's gold up there, then the companies came in with big machinery and the dredges started. So the dredges were high power. They could come in and, and excavate a lot of land at a time to find more gold. So while we were there, we got to pan for gold ourselves. I mean. How often in life are you gonna to get to pan for gold and keep the gold that you find? So that was a great experience, I loved that. After Fairbanks, we flew from the airport in Fairbanks over to Dawson in Canada. Dawson City, not a city anymore, it's a small town now, but this was like stepping out of time. This town looks exactly like it did 100 years ago. The buildings are unique. The buildings are all historical. There's no pavement. It's all dirt roads through there. And seeing the history, living that experience, um, talking to the locals that live there year round and the people that just come in for the season, going to Diamond Tooth Gerties. I love Dawson City. And we got to go up on top of the mountain and see the view down. Just spectacular. You're right there along the Yukon River and you realize this is the point everyone was trying to get to during the gold rush. And we made it 
just like that. Just taking a little plane, flying over, and boom, we're there. We're back in the 1800s. It was not easy to get to, but those who did make it there, you know, some of them got very, very wealthy. What was really interesting to me about the Yukon was we were up near the Arctic Circle. So in Denali and in Fairbanks, it was very, very cold, a little rainy. We got to Dawson City, same distance from the Arctic Circle just about, and it was sunshiny and beautiful and warm. And it was just so strange how the weather changed just like that. And the fact that we were in the land of the midnight sun and it didn't matter what time it was, you open those curtains and there's sunlight outside. It was cool because we went to Diamond Tooth Gertie's, came out at about 11 o'clock, look up and the sun is shining. That's just something I had never experienced before. And uh, it's just like, it, it throws you off a little bit. You're like, wait, what, what time is it? And you're looking at your watch and it doesn't make sense that it's late at night and you should be sleeping in bed and it's bright sunshine outside. So it's throwing your internal time clock off. <laughs> so that takes a little bit of getting used to. So that's one of the things that we were not expecting that happened to us that we experienced during this cruise tour. But after Dawson City, we took a long bus ride down to Whitehorse. So in choosing cruise tours, there's lots out there. If you go look at Holland America's website, you will see there are dozens of options for cruise tours. You can just do Alaska or you can do a combination of Alaska and the Yukon. The one we did had a combination of the two. So even within that, there are different variations. So you could, the one we did had a bus tour from Dawson City to Whitehorse, but there are options of a flight from Dawson City to Whitehorse. So we had the bus ride and it was a long ride. I think that was probably one of the biggest shockers for me was that long bus ride. So it was beautiful. We made stops so you weren't just sitting on a bus the whole time. They, we stopped and had lunch by a beautiful creek. It was as enjoyable as it could have been, but it was a long day. So just be prepared for that if you choose the option with the bus. Again, there is a flight that would get you to Whitehorse really quick. So if you're doing that, you might want to look at that route as well. In Whitehorse, we did not do anything because we arrived late in the evening and it was raining outside and we knew we had to be back on the bus early in the morning. So we just took that night to relax. So I don't have anything to report from Whitehorse and I'm sorry that we did miss that stop. The next day, we got back on the bus and let me tell you, this was the most spectacular day. On that bus from Whitehorse into Skagway, you're going through the mountains. There's snow everywhere the stream is even partially frozen. The views were incredible. We were literally had our little faces pressed up against the glass going the whole way. It was so pretty. This is something I am so glad we did experience by bus because it went slower. We were able to stop, take pictures, get out and experience it. We were on the White Pass Trail. So again, we're doing the Gold Rush in reverse. Most people start in Skagway and they took the White Pass or the Kilchut Trail up to get to Dawson City. We started in Dawson City and we're working our way down. So from Skagway, you can do the round trip White Pass Railway, which will pick you up in port, take you up into the mountains and then bring you back via rail. We've done that before. You have the option of doing the rail up and the bus down. Highly recommend that if you're doing this as an excursion because you do get that bus portion. And then our experience on this, because we were coming from the Yukon, we had a complete bus experience. We made a couple of stops in the Yukon before we even crossed into Alaska. Absolutely breathtaking. I loved it. I highly recommend this to anybody who's thinking about doing Alaska. Once we were in Skagway, we got on the ship. So seven days of Anchorage, Denali, Fairbanks, Dawson, Whitehorse, down to Skagway, one whole week. Then we get on the ship and it's like <sighs> relaxation. What's great about that whole land portion is they keep track of your bags the whole time. You literally pack your bag, put it outside. It's got a luggage tag on it and it's gonna show up in your hotel room at the next destination. That's fabulous. But the part of the cruise that's so awesome is that you unpack once. You get on the ship, you unpack, you put everything in your closet, you're done. Everything's right there. So that was nice being able to get on the ship, 
and unpack and know I'm not going anywhere for the next four days. Going places, but I'm not leaving my stuff. I liked that part. So once we got into Skagway, got on the ship, did the whole boarding process, had some lunch, we went out and explored Skagway. And let me tell you, we had an entire different perspective of this town. We have been to Skagway a couple of times on cruises and thought, oh, this is a neat town. That's a beautiful railway. Knowing the history of the gold rush was a game changer. You look at everything different. You appreciate everything more. Again, like I said, I didn't care a thing about the gold rush before starting this tour, but I gained an appreciation of it. And I think that was really, really special. That's something that came out of this that I really appreciate it. So we really enjoyed just walking around Skagway. We could have done the train, but since we had just done the bus tour, we decided not to. It was part of our tour, so we could have. Just enjoyed walking around the town, having a, an interesting cocktail. If you're in Skagway, you have to go to the Red Onion Saloon and have a reindeer fart. Crazy sounding drink name, very delicious though. Then the next day, we're on the ship and we're in Glacier Bay. So now it feels familiar. You're getting back into that cruise that you're used to. So Skagway, then Glacier Bay, then Ketchikan, then back to Vancouver. Overall, absolutely fantastic trip. We had a great time in each of the, I'm gonna call them ports, even though they're not ports. Each of the stops that we made were great. No regrets. I wish we would have got to do something in, in Whitehorse again, but we didn't have time there. Getting back on the ship, the Conningsdam is a beautiful ship. Been on the ship before. We actually did round trip Vancouver last year. What's interesting and what most people are not gonna expect if they do one of these cruise tours is you are stepping on board the ship in the middle of everybody else's cruise. So everyone else on the Conningsdam was on a seven day round trip. They had left Vancouver, they had been to Juneau and they were making their second stop in Skagway where we were just boarding the ship at that time. So we got the rest of the cruise experience from that point, but others had been on for a full week or were going to be on for a full week. Would I do this again? Absolutely. Would I do the exact same tour again? I don't know, I'd probably change it up. But I think that doing an Alaska cruise tour should be on everybody's bucket list. It was an incredible trip. I'm so glad we did it. Seeing Denali was incredible. Seeing that there's more to Alaska than the little southeastern tail is just incredible. Seeing the Alaska mountain range, Mount Denali, Denali National Park, all the wildlife, the train ride, spectacular getting to experience the Yukon, an, an extra bonus. So yes, I definitely recommend this to everyone. My suggestion would be go look at all the cruise tour options out there. Maybe you don't wanna do that many days land and you wanna do more of a cruise. You can do a seven day cruise and add on two to three or four days of land. There's so many options out there, just go look. Also, I am a travel agent. If you're interested, I can do that looking for you. I can give you some options of what all is out there and help you plan this trip completely from beginning to end. My information's right here. In recap, all of the surprises that we had were 99.9% .9 positive. I recommend everyone seeing Alaska. If you don't have time to do a full cruise tour, which is gonna be 10 to 13 days, just do the cruise. The cruise is amazing. But if you have that extra time and you can add on the land portion, absolutely 100% do it. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and we'll see you next time. Bye.